This episode will be completely taken out of context. Welcome to the Fact Check This Podcast. Alright, Fact Check This Podcast, episode 43, and Mr. Potato Head is no longer Mr. It is now just the Potato Heads. And, to be fair, I'm not going to take this out of context or whatever. I'm going to fact check myself. It has been announced that it will still be Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, and the whole Potato Gang is going to be there. They're just removing the name Mr. from the packaging. So now it'll just be the Potato Heads, and it'll be two adult potatoes and a baby potato with a whole bunch of clothes, and you can dress them up however you want. So if you want a totally non-binary potato family, whatever you want to do, you do you. And I've got to ask, did anybody actually give a shit about Mr. Potato Head or the potato family in any way prior to this announcement? Like, to me, it just feels like a blatant uh, shot in the dark to try to drum up interest and get people caring about the potato heads again. Like, there hasn't been a Toy Story movie for a number of years now. So there hasn't been any propaganda out there to keep pushing forth any of these obsolete unthought of toys anymore so they had to do something to to get themselves in the news right like and that's just to me that's what it feels like it doesn't feel like there was any cry for a need to remove mr from potato from mr potato head like did anybody even care about mr potato head anymore like they make Mandalorian and Star Wars potato heads uh, it's it's a novelty item it's not actually a toy that anybody cares about legitimately at, at this point it's just it's insane and stupid and and that's what society is at this point it's just stupidity and insanity on repeat and at the same time or maybe not at exactly the same time, but roughly at the same time. This past week, we also got the notification that Disney is putting a disclaimer on the Muppets and rating the Muppets as adult only because they portray racial stereotypes. I, it's if if it hadn't already become apparently clear like we don't live in a society of common sense or like who who's complaining about the muppets that this was necessary and and honestly nobody uh, as far as anybody can tell no or is aware nobody actually complained about it they did it preemptively in case somebody did complain about it which in and of itself is completely batshit crazy that you have to put you have to preemptively put disclaimers on a show like The Muppets in the event that, and not in the event that, in the inevitability that some jackass is going to complain about racial stereotypes or something dumb from The Muppets. Or somebody's going to complain about gender inequality from a fucking potato toy. I mean, this is this is the the culture and the society and the world that we live in now is like this ignorance and and I've talked about it before I've talked about it way too many times before that the whole cancel culture and everything about this is it, it is such a level of insanity that most of the average not insane uh faction of society pushes back against this stuff pretty hard and and people who are willing to put their money where their mouth is i i use ben shapiro as an example all the time but like he picked up gina carano and they're gonna let her make a movie and star in it and 
produce it and and people are going to people like they are they are effectively crowdfunding that like be, through subscriptions to the daily wire and donations that they get as a media company and all of that stuff and all of the other all of the other stuff that they do as a company that's going to fund that and they're going to make it happen because people want it to happen people want to support that sort of thing uh, like and at the same time more often than not you see that it's a you know it's a common phrase that gets thrown around is get woke go broke and you see it regularly like espn's ratings have been just in the tank for the last five years or so because the more progressive and woke and ignorant they've gotten with the way they cover stuff and the way they politicize and just radicalize every aspect of something as simple and basic as sports has become fucking nuts and people have pushed back against it and don't want anything to do with it because the average sports fan doesn't give a shit about any of that all they want to do is see the highlights and find out who won and watch the top 10 and they don't want to be preached to or have any of that crap pushed down their throat it's becoming a bad joke i read a or i, I listened to the audiobook of uh what they went into, they detailed how a lot of this cancel culture and everything involved in it really doesn't serve any good purpose. And it, it's, uh, it's actually having the opposite effect. Uh, the book is called The Coddling of the American Mind. Uh, it's by Jonathan Haidt and uh, Greg Lukianoff. And uh, it's The Coddling of the American Mind, How Good Intentions and bad ideas are setting up a generation for failure and it goes into a lot of the detail about how cancel culture and over censorship and all of this stuff it's not producing positive effects it's actually working in the opposite direction and not only that but it's creating this culture of super soft pampered sheltered just pussy kids that are horrible human beings and i mean it's an it's an excellent book and well worth the read well worth the listen like take some time to find it and dedicate some time to actually reading it or listening to it because the content is exceptional and it it's an older book they've they actually came back and revised it within the last few years because a lot of the stuff that they had originally written about like six or seven years ago has gotten even more insane to the point that they felt like they needed to update it and and kind of follow up and these are not like crazy conservatives or like neocons or anything like that like these are these are not newsmax oan watching people like they are by all accounts very left-wing very much progressive types and they can see just what a terrible thing this is and it, it's got to change like something's got to give on that so take the time look it up the coddling of the american mind totally worth the time and just like we have got to reevaluate some of this ridiculous shit that that's going on in our country right now and while we're talking about reevaluating ridiculous shit and the gender fluidity of a fucking potato another thing that's been in the news and i've i've tried to avoid the topic as much as possible like in in all aspects of my s social media interaction for a number of years i have tried to avoid this topic as much as possible because it is such an inflammatory topic but there was a an article or a headline about a 50 year old uh transgender woman uh six foot eight behemoth of a dude that is now playing college basketball at like a women for a women's team 
at uh, like a junior college or something. Uh, I, it's, uh, it's a transgender woman and identifies as a female. Got the long hair and blah, blah, blah. And this is something that's got to give. Like, it is, it is unfair in every way. I worked for Mississippi State's women's basketball team in college and then went on to work for Murray State's women's basketball team in college. And those young ladies, who every single one of them I consider a friend to this day, but those young ladies were phenomenal athletes. And if put on a court against a handful of random dudes who played high school basketball, the handful of random dudes would absolutely beat the brakes off of them 10 times out of 10. And it, it has nothing to do with a lack of talent or ability or skill or any of that. There are physiological differences between men and women. And all these transgender athletes, they're not women competing in women's sports. They are still biologically men. Like they still have all of the advantages of a man, of a man going into these sports. It'd be like if I shaved my beard and grew my hair back out and decided, all right, I'm going to be a woman now. And I guarantee you, I could walk onto any college women's college basketball team and be pretty competitive, if not beat most of them at my age with my terrible feet. Like That's why a 50-year-old dude is able to play competitively in, you know, in a collegiate setting because he's six foot eight and weighs 250 pounds and has every physical advantage over every single other person on that court all the time. Every time he steps foot on the court, he is automatically one of the top two players on the court, just based on his size alone. Uh, and I, like I said, I don't say any of this to diminish women's sports. Like they put in every bit the effort that the men do, probably more. They are every bit as talented in terms of just pure skill as most of the men are. But there are definite physiological differences. And it's the same people that think that this is a good thing and want to promote this are the trust the science people who at every fucking turn completely ignore the actual science. Because the actual science behind it is there aren't 75 genders or however fucking many genders they claim there are. There, there, there aren't two. There are three. Because you could either be a man, or you can be a woman, or you can be a transvestite and have both. But even most of them, like, as that tends to work, they, they tend to go one direction or the other. Like, they may have both, but not both are functional. And that gets into way more biology than what I'm equipped to, to tackle. But... Like, we, we need to actually go to trusting the science. And, like, if these people want to identify as a woman and compete against other people who also identify as women, then let all of them go and compete against each other. But don't put them on the same field or on the same court as the actual biological women. It's just creating unfair advantages. Like, he did it as a joke, but Zuby, who is a a, an, a singer and uh, he does other stuff. He's a, like a social media personality. Now, he, he, he identified as a woman. He went on film and said, I identify as a woman. And set the British world record for uh, bench press, I think it was, or maybe it was deadlift, or it doesn't matter. It, like, it was something. Like, just a normal day at the gym for him was the world record 
for the women's category. And, and like, he's not a world-class athlete. Like, he's not an Olympic weightlifter. He's just a dude that lifts weights. But it, it really goes to set the example and show the difference between men and women as far as that goes. And, and I'm not saying, like, if an adult feels like he or she is trapped in the wrong body or whatever and wants to transition and become a woman or become a man, more power to you. Like, you do you, be happy, whatever. But stay the fuck out of sports. Like... You don't see this going the other way. You don't see women saying that they identify as a man so that they can go compete in men's sports. Because they would get absolutely fucking obliterated. And they know it. Everybody knows it. This only goes in one direction. It is only men who identify as women to go participate in women's sports. And it's making a mockery of those sports, like, you can joke about women's basketball or whatever. What they do, the effort that they put in, the work that they put in, because I've seen it firsthand. Like, I, I know what goes into it. They work every bit as hard as the men, if not harder. And to have a man, a biological man, claim to be a woman and cross over and start competing in women's sports without putting in that work, it makes a mockery of the fucking sport. And that should be disgraceful. And we don't see a bunch of women clamoring for this, like saying, oh yeah, yeah, we need to let these people in. It's people who don't have anything to do with sports. The, the super woke mobs that don't give two shits about sports are the ones that push for this all the time. They want this to be a common thing. I have daughters. If a dude stepped on the court to play volleyball against my oldest daughter, I would be very tempted to walk out there and knock him clean the fuck out because it's putting my child at an unfair disadvantage having to compete in that. I, mean, I am not in any way trying to diminish transgendered people if you feel that then that's your feeling okay if you want to do something about it then do something about it if you don't want to change and you just want to play dress up that's your prerogative you do you you be happy don't take that and go on a into a sporting event and basically punish actual biological women. Science and feelings are two very, very different things. And if you have that feeling, that is your right. And you do with it what you want. But let science actually dictate biological matters and stay the fuck off the court if you're not a biological woman. That's all I got. Probably get banned now. Whatever. It's been fun, everybody. I'm joking. I'll be back on Wednesday. They're not going to kick me off just for this. Uh, ten people listen to this. <laughs> it's like, what? Are y'all going to complain? <laughs> oh, this video will be up on YouTube for a limited time, I'm sure. It's also on BitChute. Um, so if you want to watch the video, I'm wearing a, a fun shirt today. Not that you can see the whole shirt, but yeah. There we go. My kids really got a kick out of this shirt. Uh, that's all I got. Hope everybody has a good day, good week. I'll be back later in the week. Hopefully we'll get something fun in the news that I can actually talk about other than just depressing shit. Have a good one. See ya.